I'm Jonathan from Potency World, a revolution in girls' education. I'm here in my capacity as an interview host for Business Live Global. We're meeting another exciting entrepreneur or mover or shaker or game changer in the world and finding out what makes them tick and a favorite song which will play the end of this short interview. There's only 10 minutes to go, so um, take the time now. Have a listen. CEO and award winner, Cynthia Davis of the Divisifying Group. Cynthia, hello. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. How are you today? I am great. I'm doing well. The sun is shining, so all's good in my world. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, I met you at uh, International Women in STEM event, which was fantastic. Tell me a bit about this Diversifying Group because it seems much bigger than just a company. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, diversifying group uh, stemmed, I suppose, from uh, a frustration that I had really years ago when I realised as a, as, a, as a black woman working in the kind of corporate world that, um, you know, I had a lot of different challenges that, you know, other people similar to me were also experiencing. So, um I suppose to kind of set the scene and how the company came to be, you know, mm. I'd worked in the corporate world for quite a long time, decided to take some time out to have a, a child. And um, when I became a mum, you know, the challenges that I'd experienced when I went into the world of work started to really dawn on me. And I think it was that realisation that, oh, God, OK, what my parents went through, what I went through is most likely what my child's going to go through. And as a mum, there's just something that just connects with you around. I've got to do something. You know, I can't bring a, a child into this world, you know, if things are the way that they are. So I really, wow. you know, I had the idea in my mind for a long, long time. But I think it was just the birth of my daughter that made me really focus on what can I do? You know, what are what are the things that need to be done to start eradicating things like uh, racism, discrimination, all the challenges that we all face when we yeah, go into yeah. the world, world of work, if you are somebody from, um, you know, underrepresented communities and, you know, in the minority. Um, and that's how the, the company really stemmed. It was when I was on maternity leave and just thinking, what can I do? And one of the things that I'd done in my career was worked as a recruiter. Um, right. And I'd worked in, in, you know, as a recruiter for quite a, a number of years in some big corporate organizations organizations um and I thought well I know there's great people out there that genuinely don't always have equal access to opportunities and you know we can't move forward unless everyone is given that access to those opportunities and that we start to educate people on how to do that yeah. um and I believe that you can't expect the world to change if you're not prepared to be part of that solution so I had to put my money where my mouth was really and um find a way to change it and that's how the business started was just out of that sheer frustration of what we need to do better as a society we need to do better to allow some of that great talent that we know is so um underrepresented and not given that opportunity to shine so that that's how the business started well i'm not being funny but if your daughter should ever watch this what an act of absolute love oh my word the meaning the Per right okay purpose driven yeah you're purpose driven very, very purpose driven yeah yeah this is not on the questions that i'm supposed to be asking you but <laughs> you're going rogue now are you well it's just that <laughs> are you neurodivergent yourself dyslexia dyscalculia anything like that uh no but i've got um i've got ocd so <laughs> okay OCD, yeah, okay, so o OCD, the unpleasant part is not nice, but the order is something, do you picture it in your mind, how everything should be, or do you, are you talking to yourself? No, I tend to picture how, I, I'm very particular about things that they, yeah. they've got to be a particular kind of way, so yes, yeah, so I suppose that's where that that my OCDness comes from is that you know the the particularness of things and things have to be certain kind of way and have to be of a particular kind and of attention to detail. Very much so, yeah. Very yeah. much so. So, listen, what's the difference between diversifying group and diversifying mm -hmm. jobs? Are there two companies that you own? Yeah, the two separate companies that I own. Um, so Diversifying Group is a services led organization that focuses more on the, the tools and the resources that organizations 
uh, will need to go on a journey of inclusion and creating equal access to opportunities. So that's things like recruitment. You know, we've got an executive search side of the business. We also have a board practice that focuses on that leadership perspective because it's really hard to get the leaders, mm. you know, to really be part of the, the solution as well, but really understand what part they play in this. Um, but also educating people. So we've got a, a great uh, training uh, facility that we offer. And, you know, we've got some incredible DNI trainers who go around and really that change changing hearts and minds but giving people that real good understanding of the part that they need to play it's how do we um, get out of our default mode into something that's more inclusive and fit for purpose um, and we also have a consultancy side and an event side to the business so that's the diversifying group um, diversifying.io which is the diversifying jobs part of it is um, a tech platform so we actually have three Ooh. pro diversity job platform that we own and it's giving organizations access to advertise their jobs so alongside that mm. it's very much more around storytelling around the culture of the organization so one of the most I think challenging things that organizations have is this brand perception so I might look at a certain brand and think yeah I don't think I will fit in it doesn't resonate with somebody like me but behind the scenes they're probably doing so much amazing work that people don't necessarily know about or they're probably one of the most inclusive kind of organizations but because of the brand perception people have they sometimes self-disqualify and rule themselves out of even applying for jobs in those organizations so this is a great opportunity for companies to really showcase what they're doing going beyond that we're an equal uh, opportunity yes. organization which everyone does right it's almost yeah. like a cut yeah. case that yeah. people got to put like a tick like a tick box right exactly so this is where they can really articulate what they're doing around inclusion so whether they've got policy around gender or around you know the gender pay gap or around ethnicity or lgbtq plus that doesn't involve one day on pride with yes. put rate more than that um you know what do they how do they support um you know, things like the new world that we're in now, which is all around hybrid working or, you know, remote working, you know, things like mental health, all those things are really, really important when candidates are looking for, for a, a career opportunity. I saw that on your own um, website about the way you treat your staff. So this is very much um, a balancing of um, employer-employee relations, is it not? Massively. And I, I, I'm always a great believer that we can't um, preach to others how to do it if we don't practice it in our own homes. So we've yeah. got to lead by example, right? So, um, you know, we always look and say, well, you know, if we expect organisations to be doing this, we've also got to be showing that we are doing that we are taking it seriously. So that's why you will see we put a lot of emphasis on, you know, having those, especially around mental health, you know, I, 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 I was um, a board advisor for Headspace. I know the importance of, uh, you know, mental health and well-being, mm. um, especially in the workplace and how burnout and stress and all those things have an impact on all of us as individuals. Um, but how can organisations mitigate that or how can they support that? So having the right kind of tools and policies in place to support people whenever they're going through that. But just also the diversity makeup of our own team is really, really important because we learn from each other. You know, none of us ever profess to know everything about every single community. But I think no, learning and hearing from people with different lived experiences will help in, to enrich us and our knowledge and our awareness of different kind of cultures and different kind of backgrounds. And, and therefore, it helps us when we're working with our clients and partners that we're able to advise in a way that's real, that's authentic and just not what I read in a textbook somewhere. Mm. There is actual real life, um, you know, awareness and experience as well. So how do you, because training courses are not enough in and of themselves, because we understand that beliefs are hidden, sometimes even from the person who believes the thing. How, what is your approach to to training? Yeah, you know, and I think for us, it's, it's realizing that, you know, everyone's got a different baseline where they're starting from. And it's understand where that baseline is and it's how do you take people on a journey, right? And I think if you stick somebody in front of a computer, you give them a bunch of questions and you ask them to tick the answers, they'll, they'll do that and off they yeah. go and it's not yeah. actually unkeen. So it's how do you change hearts and minds? And I think that's the approach that we like to take when we have training is get people to really think about 
what their actions, you know, the impacts that their actions have or what they say and do. You know, people always think things like unconscious bias is a, a magic wand. Once you, it's no longer unconscious, it becomes conscious, but it's what mm. you do with mm. it that's important. Yeah. And it's showing that more practical side of it versus just the theory of it, I think is the the key to getting people to, to change and their way of thinking. And it's that education without telling people off because i think sometimes yes. when people feel like that i've got to go training it's like as if somebody's told you you're not doing this right or you're doing it wrong but it's really the purpose and getting people to understand why you're training you know what is the training for what benefit is it going to have to them as an individual what benefit mm. is it going to have to mm. the culture of the organization and what benefits are going to have to the overall makeup of the the, the you know the, the organization so i think it's really when people really understand the impact of why they're going to the training and what it is that they're learning or unlearning mm. it then starts to be more authentic versus yeah. You need to know all this, and off you yeah. go. We'll see you yeah, know, another yeah. five years when we do another training session. It's really, you know, the the, the giving people the tools and the awareness to start to uh, affect change in a much more impactful and, and longer lasting kind of way is what we fantastic, try to do fantastic. Cynthia Davis, your song choice, Tina Turner, simply the best. I need say no more. Companies, <laughs> directors, HR directors operations directors reach out all of the notes to contact diversifying group are in the notes of the show and they are also in the notes of the youtube video connect with cynthia and her company simply uh, simply the best cynthia thank you very much away, Tina. <laughs> You're simply